Now, nearly 3,000 serving armed forces personnel are relying on benefits to make ends meet. That is right, you didn't mishear that. A parliamentary question by the Labour Party revealed that thousands of members of our armed forces who could be sent to war at the whim of our politicians, of course, are currently claiming universal credit just to get by. The number of veterans claiming benefits also rose by 12% to 38 thousand people. So to discuss this in more detail, we're joined by uh, John Speller, Labour MP, former Defence Minister and Vice Chair of the House of Commons Select Committee. John, good morning. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, you were Armed Forces morning. Minister. Is this an unusual situation or has Labour just spotted an opportunity to grab a good headline? Is, is this something that we should all be outraged about? Well, I don't think it's a good headline. I think it's, uh, it's pretty shocking. But at the moment, what it's showing is a disregard for our forces. And uh, everyone focuses on equipment. But essentially, as we're seeing in Ukraine, it's actually the personnel that matter. So we've got those on benefit. We've also had a uh, report since then showing that the uh, contractors for doing the maintenance on, the, on their homes, they've had to put out a big apology for delays and incompetence and really uh, some very unpleasant but even dangerous situations in housing. Gov the Ministry of Defence and the government have got to take a better care of the most important part of our armed forces, which is our, our servicemen and women and their families. Mm. What kind of salaries are they on? To, to mean that they have to also be applying for universal credit? Well, I think it also depends very much on their, uh, on their circumstances as, uh, 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 as well. And, of course, there is progression that, uh, that takes place in the, in, in the ranks. But quite often you have young personnel, particularly young soldiers, with, uh, with, with, with young families. And they need to, therefore, have a living wage, a wage that can actually enable them to maintain their families without actually being on benefit. I think that, uh, you know, your listeners will be slightly shocked to hear of the numbers that are involved, but also the figures regarding veterans as well. And um, it's unclear at the moment as to who's going to be the veterans minister. There was an a separate veterans minister. That appears possibly not to be the case. We'll see when the government reshuffle finally sorts itself out. And there's been a big increase in interest in Parliament in the uh, situation of veterans. I'm not sure it's uh, shared in the government at the moment. John, can I just read this statement to you from the Ministry of Defence? Because I'd love to hear your reaction to yep. it. They say, our armed forces yeah. perform an incredible service for our country. And we have developed a package which reflects that. We've introduced a range of measures to support our personnel, including the biggest pay increase in 20 years, fee freezing daily food costs, capping subsidised accommodation charge increases to 1%, and increasing get you, get you home and home to duty rates by 7%, saving families up to £3,000 per child per year by extending wraparound childcare and subsidising education for children of our personnel. So uh, it sounds quite impressive. What are they getting wrong? Well, well firstly, I'd like to know, with the expenditure on, uh, on, on children, how that divides up between the officers and the other ranks, because there's a lot of money spent on private education, mm. but uh, other ranks uh, don't benefit, don't benefit from that. You mentioned accommodation, and I've just mentioned the fact they've had to write to all their people living in their properties to apologise that the new contracts haven't been working properly. Again, subcontractors not properly managed and, le and, and, and letting, them de letting them down. And of course, an increase comes after several years of very low pay increases, if not freezes, um, which was clearly having an impact on morale and the ability to recruit and, uh, recruit and retain. So um, some of it's catching up and some of it, quite frankly, I don't think will bear scrutiny. And all the blah blah about them valuing the forces, they always say that, but frankly, the actions don't always follow the talk. Mm. Do you think the military remains an attractive career option for enough young people in this country, John? 
I think, I think it still has uh, great attraction and it provides great opportunity. And uh, for, many, for many youngsters, it's a great way of getting on and, uh, and moving up. And they very often acquire skills that are imme of immense value when they come back into the civilian workforce, as obviously, obviously they will. However, I think that uh, the actual conditions that they're put under maybe don't reflect that, and therefore they're not getting that, that balance right. And so um, it's still a great career in all of our armed forces, but at the same time, I, I don't think that the uh, Ministry of Defence and the Treasury in particular really understand the need to maintain that and to maintain morale. And the idea of cutting down our armed forces, uh, our soldiers, to 72,000, the smallest uh, sort of army since the Napoleonic Wars, I think has been claimed, um, quite frankly, sends the wrong message. It says that they're a declining business. Our, our military are immensely professional, but they deserve not only our thanks and respect, they actually deserve a proper deal. Mm. Well, I couldn't agree more. Uh, John Speller, uh, Labour MP, thank you. And thank you for raising awareness for this. It's nice to know that there is somebody fighting on behalf of our troops uh, here in the UK. Thank you.